What is up everybody? I haven't done a rug process video in a while, so let me show you how I made the coolest Yoshi rug you have ever seen. Yoshi is also my favorite Mario character, so I made sure to put a lot of time and love into this rug. As, as I do all my rugs, of course. The first step of the tufting process is setting up my canvas. I have my primary tufting cloth that I stretch evenly over my frame, and I just want to make sure it's pulled as tight as possible on all sides. Once the fabric was drummed tight, I projected my image and traced the whole squad with a sharpie. I'm going to start with the outline first using two strands of yarn. I like to feed one skein from the arm on my frame and the other on the floor so they don't touch or else they get all tangled and caught in my machine. For curves, I think it's easier to just tap the trigger and slowly move your way on the arc. Obviously these Yoshis are curvy as hell so this took me a while just to get the outline finished. I'm also using a new machine for this one. I only used it for the outline. I didn't really like how it felt. Um, I don't know if it's just the way it was tuned or what, but it just didn't feel good in my hands, so I returned it right away. I wanted a nice bold outline, so I actually went over this one more time, making it four yarn strands thick. I always think it's better to have more yarn than you need than not enough. Now that my outline is finished, I can color in each Yoshi, and there's 10 different colors in total. I try to keep each line the same distance so the rug is consistently full throughout. I have my machine set a little faster for this step. I'm on day two of tufting, and it's good to keep your machine clean and lubed. I do this maybe once or twice a day. During the tufting process, lint does fall all over your machine and it can get dirty pretty quick. All Yoshi homies have been tufted, so it's time to glue the bottom of the rug to keep all the yarn in place. Before this step, always check for mistakes because once it's glued, there's no turning back. I use Robert's 3095, which dries pretty tacky. Uh, it's a pretty annoying to work with, it makes your rug curl and it's sticky, but it does help a lot with the waterfall edging and keeping the non-slip on. After all the glue dries, I can cut it down from the frame. I cut about an inch or so from the rug just so I can fold around the perimeter for the waterfall edging. And that's when the edges of the rug go to the floor so you can't see the non-slip showing. This is a stylistic choice that requires a little more work, but I really like how it looks. Adding non-slip is next. I bought a giant piece to lay the rug on top so I can cut out its shape. I have this baby can of 3M77 that I'll spray on the non-slip side to attach the rug. It works really well, but this stuff is a little pricey. And please wear a mask when you use this, especially if you're inside like me. I have this carpet roller to help me smash the non-slip into the rug. The 3M spray adhesive attaches to the Tacky Roberts glue on the bottom. I can cut the excess backing off and then fully secure it with hot glue on all the edges.
And now, the longest part of the process, let's get into trimming. I have my shot vac attached to this weighted trimmer which has a spinning blade at the bottom to level out the top of the rug and suck in all the debris. This part for sure gives me the most anxiety, it's very easy to ruin a rug on this step. Which is why I'm doing this on the floor, um, it's pretty uncomfortable but I feel like I have the most control over my trimmer. What I do is I kind of just keep my arm straight and I just swing it kind of fast off the side of the rug so it doesn't suck any of the edges up. I want to make sure the top is completely flat before I start all the small details. I've made this little device to separate yarn colors. It's just a pair of tweezers that I ripped in half and attached a little cushion to. So anytime two colors meet, I'll kind of just slide it from the bottom of the rug and pull up to separate them so when I have my small clippers, I can easily cut. From here on out, it's just all small detailing. I'll use the corner of my clippers, maybe like three or four teeth, and I'll use that to kind of just shave away at colors that are blending into each other. I always cut both sides of each color. You kind of want like a little canyon wherever the colors meet, or a little V, just to make sure that they do not touch whatsoever. This really gives your rug some depth and makes the details stick out so much more. In my opinion, this is one of the most important steps, and something that probably takes the most practice to get the hang of. Sometimes during the detailing process yarn will get kind of pulled up or whatever from like separating colors or trimming So I like to go over it one last time with my weighted trimmer very very carefully I would probably cry if um, at the end of just trimming an entire rug I ended up sucking it up and just chewing it apart So be very very careful and the final step the cherry on top. It's always good to sign your work Every single rug maker does things differently. I think it's really good to just put like your stamp on it and just let people know who made it. And that is how I made this Yoshi rug front to back. This thing is five feet wide and three feet tall and I love it so much. I love Yoshi and I love how it turned out and I love the colors. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed the video. Uh, follow on all socials at S Class Supply or like and subscribe or whatever. All right, thanks, bye.